Hello, my name is Hunter Mantle, and I would like to start off by citing my sources. My source to cite is efficient blue light emitting diodes leading to bright and energy saving white light sources compiled by the class for physics of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science. This can be found at nobelprize.org and I'll have like the link here somewhere. In this video, we will be covering the following topics. One, how light is produced from a PN junction. Two, how the blue LED is used to create white light. Three, a quick summary of why the Nobel Prize was awarded for blue LEDs. Four, the difficulties and processes of producing blue LEDs. And five, the benefits of this achievement. Describe how light is produced in a PN junction. Some background on how a LED works. A light emitting diode or LED emits light by applying a forward current to the PN junction of a compound semiconductor. When forward current is passed through the light emitting diode, carriers, electrons and holes, move. The holes in the p-type region advance to the n-type region, and the electrons in the n-type region move to the p-type region. The injected carriers recombine, and the energy difference before and after recombination is released as light. The emitted light depends on the compound semiconductor's energy band gap, or E sub g. Explain how blue LED light is used to produce white light. 1. White light is created when activating a phosphor material with blue LED. Or 2. Combine red, green, and blue light to create white light. Describe the work for which the Nobel Prize was awarded. I. Akasaki, H. Ameno, and S. Nakamura were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2014 for inventing highly efficient diodes that emit blue light, a breakthrough that created energy efficient white light sources for all of humanity. The difficulties in producing blue LEDs. To truly grasp this monumental achievement, we must go back to 1907, when H.J. Round, working at Marconi Electronics, applied a voltage across a carbonium crystal. Lo and behold, the crystal started to glow yellow, but other colors were emitted at higher voltages. Next to the 1940s, the understanding of physics of semiconductors and PN junctions is progressing. Jumping to 1955, injection electroluminance was shown in a number of group 3-5 compounds. Around the same time, J.R. Haynes at Bell Telephone Laboratories shocked the world when he revealed that electroluminescence observed in germanium and silicon was because of electrons and holes recombining in the PN junction. This may seem straightforward to you, but it was revolutionary at the time. In the swinging 60s, experiments with different dopants like zinc, oxygen, or nitrogen generated different wavelengths from green to red. By the end of the 60s, manufacturers were making green and red LEDs from gallium phosphide. So why don't we have blue yet? Well, blue LEDs are made from gallium nitride, and gallium nitride is challenging to grow. Tiny crystals could be grown using a technique called hydride vapor phase epitaxy, but this didn't work well because the growth material was contaminated and the surface roughness needed to be controlled. When they doped the crystal with p-type particles, hydrogen tainted the process, creating complexes with the acceptor dopants. In their defense, they did not understand hydrogen's role in the doping process. 1981, Isumu Akasaki starts studying gallium nitride at Niyaga University with Hiroshima Amino. It would take five years before, in 1986, high-quality gallium nitride crystals could be grown using the metallurgic vapor phase epitaxy technique. With lots of experiments, they created a process to form device-grade gallium nitride. Put on your chef's hat and preheat your oven. The recipe is as follows. Step one, nucleate a thin layer, about 30 nanometers, of polycrystalline AIN on a substrate of sapphire at 500 degrees Celsius. Step two, heat up to 1000 degrees Celsius, AKA the growth temperature, for gallium nitride. Step three, reminder, check to make sure small crystallites are growing with your preferred orientation. Step four, gallium nitride will be grown on those crystallites. Step five, enjoy your freshly baked gallium nitride. Step six, optional. If you're allergic to background end doping, gallium nitride can also be produced with significantly lower levels. Shujai Nakamura at Nishai Chemical Corporation later created a way to replace AIN with a thin layer of gallium nitride grown at low temperature if you don't have any AIN on hand. As you can see, 
a lot of work went into the invention of blue LEDs. Benefits of this achievement. 20 to 30% of a developed country's electricity goes to lighting, and old light bulbs use 10 times the energy to generate the same amount of light as white light LEDs. We can create light 10 times more efficiently thanks to blue light LEDs. Now powering your lights from a battery and some solar panels is much more efficient with LEDs. Also, because we can now use the same techniques to make ultraviolet LEDs for like things like purifying water with a lot less energy or just killing germs with a lot less energy. That is very helpful in places that don't have a sustainable power grid or like a reliable power grid. The same with like basically being able to put a bunch of solar panels up on your roof and have a big battery in your home and being able to basically light your home with solar panels and a battery is very, very helpful. And being able to decontaminate your water with a highly efficient ultraviolet light is also very, very handy and even decontaminate surfaces, you know, clean tools and stuff like that. So yeah, that is blue LEDs.